our John Deere 2510 toolbar and 1910 commodity cart dual placement rig was either going to need a few updates and parts replacements or replaced entirely. And while we absolutely love the toolbar, we now have the BBI dry spreader, which has worked great for fertilizer and lime. So we opted to find just an anhydrous toolbar, which several anhydrous toolbars are no longer uh, manufactured, such as the John Deere 2510S. So that led us searching for additional brands. New to the market is the Unver First Toolbar, which is not actually new to the market, it's just a uh, they either bought out Blue Jet or they've had some sort of a joint venture with Blue Jet, but it's a Blue Jet toolbar now branded under Unreferred and painted either red or green. And yes, you can still get the Blue Jet as well. So the very first picture you saw was the Unreferred toolbar at a local dealer. And we really liked what we saw, so we decided to do some more research to place our order. We ordered the bar based on the configuration that we wanted for our operation and our toolbar was agreed to be built and actually it was featured at the Farm Progress Show this year. So if you happen to be going by the Unreferred booth and saw a Renegade 2500 toolbar, that was ours. Now they sell these toolbars in even or on-row packages and they sell it as a 2500 or a 3500 depending on how many knives you want or your type of wheel configuration that you want etc. There's a lot of options to each one of them, but both of them feature the same base frame. Uh, the hitch is different. The 25 and 3500 look the same, but the 3500 has a longer hitch. Now, if you were in a Blue Jet model, the 2500 is a legacy model, and the 3500 is a AT6020. Ours is the Renegade 2500 with the 385 truck tire option tandems. Uh, you can get this as single wheel tractor tires and if you step up to the AT6020 or the 3500 you can get a dual tractor tire option. Which the tractor tires are made for side dress. So here is our Unverfirth Renegade 2500 toolbar and I'm going to go through this video and you guys are going to get some kind of sporadic clips as we were uh, going through it and just checking everything out on it. But uh, with everything new you're going to buy you're going to have a certain degree of setup work. But you don't expect to have to go through and redo things that are factory uh, installed or equipped or set up. So the clips are going to be a little bit sporadic here. Uh, but I'll show you kind of as we go down through the toolbar all the little problem spots that we found on it. And I'll also go through and I'll show you guys some of the options that are available for it. And uh, how the toolbar can work and how uh, what options you can get on this specific uh, toolbar. And we'll go down through the whole thing here. I'll eventually show you the guys this toolbar in action out in the field. Okay, let's start out by looking at the hitch here at the front of this machine. And one of the things I do not like about it, but it is a smaller company, so they kind of have to do what they do. Now, if this was a John Deere, they'd probably have nice little weld structures on everything where everything's kind of a permanent mount instead of this poor looking U bolts. Um, not that they're bad, not that they're weak. I just don't find the fit and finish of U-bolts strapped everywhere to be very nice or neat. We have gauges here, and these gauges are, oh, that's weird, one of them is labeled unreferred the rest or not, but these gauges are poor. This is lens need like silicone around them, because those will probably be full of dirt. And you can see how this thing just tips back against the hitch, and is likely going to be right into the quick hitch here when it turns. Uh, so guys going to be extra careful. We do have a category four loop by hitch there, adjustable pin, safety chain that you could wrap around the entire tractor. Uh, for lengths, that'll need trimmed off. And we have our hitch here, and I do kind of like how they bring the Raven system up here on the hitch and strap it up here as it allows you to see it from the cab and bleed it off easier. This is the stainless steel Vortox system. Uh, this has more flow than the twin units of the older, smaller uh, double stack units. Uh, and they do have like a little turbocharger for that thing that you can even get even more capacity out of. And we have our wrench here that they give you for leveling the hitch. You'll see that here in a sec. And we have our self-leveling hitch in a hydraulic adjuster. This is what kicks it out for depth stops. And this plate here had to be added for the cat whisker switch uh, to kick all this stuff on and off. So this is an 1830 machine. This has the 
spring shanks here. They have another one, it's called a Max Coil, which has a big box here with a coil spring going this way. It's a little higher dollar option, but for our soil, this was more than sufficient. And we, I do like the way they grab their colders. Their colders are on a square box tube where IH is on a round shaft and it never wants to stay put. This is superior in my opinion by a long shot. Very sharp blades. And then we have the uh, closers, which are colder blades. And these are an optional down pressure spring. And we did go with a, a three quarter freezeless uh, knife. Now the idea of this toolbar is to scatter the trash through it. So we have units in the front, units in the back. Now you'd have only one unit here. If this was a uh, like a 17 or a 19, it would be alternating. But we have two because of this is a 16 or 18. And also we're going directly between the tandems, whereas it would be actually in front of the tire if it was a 17 or 19. And you can go through the book here and you can see all the different options. We have the uh, 385 walking tandem tire option here. They do have this large single uh, tractor tire option here, which have to be lowered in from the top, but they don't have the load carrying that uh, these tires do. And uh, they're primarily made for uh, side dress applications with the uh, tractor tire option. Oh, it does look cool. And you can go through the book. They do have a very good book. And you can see the assembly instructions and everything else, as well as I went online and downloaded a Blue Jet Legacy uh, Operator's Manual, which is what this toolbar is. This, again, is the uh, Legacy. Now, the Legacy and the uh, AT uh, 60, uh, I think it's 6010, now 6020 Blue Jet. This is all the same main frame, same wing deal assemblies here. They just put a longer hitch on with the other one and uh, change wing length. Um, these are all adjustable or, or greasable, I mean, greasable linkage here, uh, which none of it was ever factory greased. We greased everything, but uh, it is nice to see it is greasable. I mean, not very many companies would make something uh, greasable. And the units again are staggered, uh, front and rear, front and rear. And the idea is for trash flow. We ordered we ordered this with four sections, so you're going to have your uh, dividers out here, then your uh, section controls. And we have the 385 option on the wing in the main frame. And throughout this, you're going to see some clips here where this machine is not wanting to run level. It's 295, uh, 22.5 truck tires on the wings would be standard. Same with the main frame. Now, if you had the 385s there and the 295s there, then we'd be able to level out. But that just doesn't seem uh, right to me that the company would build something that requires... Um, I mean, they're giving you options that ultimately don't work with other options. And we have the hitch here up on high position. You can see the gussets, they go up and this sits on the high side. This can go down to where it goes down the other way, but that would be on more like an in-between machine where you only have one shank in the center instead of two. But when they did this, it lifts this up on the high side, which brings the draw bar up higher than I'm comfortable with. I would like to see it on the lower position to drop that height by about, it'd be down about here we should put this about here and that would be much better positioned in my opinion because of the front and rear stagger this thing does have a lot of clearance which I like you can get up in here and you can work on stuff if you see right there those little plates and you see that little cable going across those are a safety latch so these black things here flop over into those green things and they'll when the wings go over you can't release the wings till you give that a yank and those will stay over center holding those up and that allows the wings to go over it's a good idea for road transport so the wings can't flop out but if you have to do that every single time out in the field that's not handy at all now according to the book we are in the right positions here on these wing frames or these wheel frames but we could lower that to the lower pin which again is not in the book, but that would give us extra center height. And that would give us the level that we need. Um, this side here, I did get all the hoses redone and rerouted. And what you want, you want a little flop in these hoses and everything routed nice and neat. And that's not how it came from the factory. And including they couldn't even read their own setup manual. So that's where this thing stands. Uh, you guys will see it next in the field, but uh, we chose it because we liked the way the bar was built and put together. Again, this is a blue jet bar, but uh, what we got here and the quality of workmanship and the uh, little problems I'm not too happy with. Not for the cost of it.
but we're going to check this for level. We've leveled the hitch this way, front and rear. And you can see that adjustment here is in this. This is threaded, so this hitch will tip up or down, level the frame out. So we are level now. Check everything here. Again, checking for level and hydraulic hose clearance, all that kind of stuff. And on the ground, we are looking pretty good for hitch height. This is where they've routed those. Does not seem to me like that's where it should be. Uh, just because obvious reasons of clearance there. Again, yeah, this toolbar would be configurable in different uh, widths. This is 1830, also 1630 if you wanted it. Uh, this extension here bolts on, and they have other extensions that would bolt on uh, here and here if you wanted them to. We could take this off and put it here going forward and remove that unit if we were wanting it to be a 16. That's how they would configure it from the factory, uh, which we would do what the factory says and move stuff around if we desire, but we're going to attempt to go with 1830. Uh, okay, we're going to level the wings here. How you do that is they have this clamp, and this is adjustable, and then they have a threaded rod here for finite adjustments. Loosen this up, adjust with the rod, and tighten this back up to hold it. And you can see here we're a little bit out of uh, level. So we'll make sure this is all leveled out. And again, we are checking the toolbar over here for whatever little things we can find uh, as to problems or issues or setup. We found multiple loose things. They did come back and they greased everything. It was never even greased out of the factory. And over here on this other side, we found a few things looking through, uh, looking through it here. And this is the little kind of crap that I like to notice, but like this hose, this is all pinched up. This has been unfolded like twice. And this shouldn't be tight and underneath that cylinder. It ought to be looped around differently the other way. And this hose here is in the spring. Well, that's going to be an issue. So stuff like this bracket here needs to be slid up and out of harm's way. Example of one of the things you find this hose here it's actually gone over and it crimped you can see it was actually smashing shut here uh, pretty poor routing working on leveling the wings here we got our level uh, pending this is welded in correct but you can kind of see a little bit of a so here's our bubble you can see that and bring that up a few degrees there's level now a few degrees and that much span is probably a couple turns so we loosened up our adjusters loosened up these couldn't quite figure out why we're not able to get any more out of it but then we realized that our pin is a hundred percent maxed out against the frame so she's as far back as she'll go. And it still doesn't level out. That gets me questioning is if these are in the right holes. Uh, as they have different tire options here. So I'm going to check the book to make sure that we have this linkage here set up properly. So the owner's manual shows these being back here, but then if that shank there folds over, that's a clearance issue. You look at this hydraulic, well, that's a, a hydrous hose, but you look at, and this is just, man, that's tight. So this hydraulic hose here goes down, loops through it, and then comes back here. Why wouldn't it just be shorter and just come in this way? And see, this and hydro hose is in the springs. I mean, that spring is just going to smash it. 
getting these here we've been flipping around out the front because this one goes right into the tire when you let it down flipping these brackets around i guess the company couldn't make up their minds you got a nylock here then on the others you just have a regular uh, lock nut and again we're continuing with the no grease pattern here uh, nothing was greased out of the doors of the factory and all the units except for two have uh, the mounting plate here on the front of the shank. It's this little box tube in here, a weld and butt plate. Except for these two because it's back there next to that wheel frame. So on the on row machines, they have to use this. Well, logic would think that you just build a wider plate here and then just put a U bolt around, right? But they didn't do that and they got this weird narrow plate and they have these extra threaded bolts and this thing smashes up against the bolt here then they got this little bracket here and these are like twisting and tweaking and this is set way deeper not to mention this is kind of cocks against the bolt heads oh, and they fuck we had a rain day, so we were able to work on this toolbar, and I pieced this video together over a series of different days. As I went down through the toolbar, the more things I found. And as I went down through this uh, list of stuff, just pulling up the setup manual, reading every single thing about nuts and bolts and directions that are supposed to go on in the hole, but I actually went online, looked at some others that were at dealer lots. I uh, looked at the one that the dealer had that we were looking at when we decided to place the order on this. And I, I swear every single one of these has a little bit different setups. Like, here you go, guys. Here's a box of parts. Uh, figure something out. Put together a toolbar. But this link here, it is in the correct uh, hole positions. And that's according to the online setup manual. But the wing is still not leveling out. And I'm 100% out of threads here. And we measured off the floor. We did check this floor for levels, dead level. We're 11 and a half inches to the tip of the knife uh, to the floor there, and we're 14 inches out there. Now, I know when you let this down, you can have additional stroke in your wheels, but it says in the book to use an even uh, depth control on your cylinder rods. Well, how are you going to use an even depth control on your cylinder rods when the thing's not even to start with? So you're going to have to use uneven controls. And the bigger thing is, it's mainly just this right-hand wing. It's not the left-hand wing as well. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's closer than this right-hand wing, which is kind of throwing me for a loop. Uh, they did sell a 295, 75, or 225 uh, truck tire option, well, or standard tire option, uh, throughout the whole machine, which would be the same problem we got here now. Or you could get 385s on the wings and the mains, which is what we did order. Or you can get a combination of both. Um, if you had the 385s in here like we do, and went with the 295s out here. There's 1.6 inches difference, which would drop at three quarters of an inch, and three quarters of an inch in this span would be more than sufficient to level back out. But uh, that would be the correct uh, tire option to make it uh, run level. Would be the big ones in the center and the standard ones in the wing. But it just doesn't seem to me like you should have to do that to make it go level. And additionally, you would thought that if they were having an issue, or if that's how they designed the toolbar, that they would have went back later and uh, compensated with arm lengths so it would make sure that it actually goes level. Now it's a little hard to see here in the camera, but it definitely goes uphill. And no, you can't just go out and run and have a whole bunch of inconsistent uh, knife depths. So uh, we're gonna have to get this figured out here yet. And because somebody's gonna say so, we did have a Case IH toolbar prior going to that John Deere dual placer. And it was a fine toolbar, but it itself had problems such as the underside, the main tires were undersized and a few other things we just did not like about it and it would trip out and it would never reset the shanks very well and it'd break the knives and it just i don't know there was just things about it that we just did not like uh, this in our opinion was a heavier better bar and again there's been a lot of bars on the market that have kind of went away such as the 2510 john deere uh, so this is what we felt was the best but uh what we got here and got delivered uh, we like it but we don't like the little workmanship problems and the uh, lack of detail orientation uh, that was done by Unreferth in their setup. And it 
probably wasn't even under first. It's probably Blue Jet. And what correlation they have between the company and under first, I don't know. But regardless, it's uh, things to get resolved. But I think once we do get these kinks worked out, it'll be a fine toolbar for years to come. Um, somebody will probably tell me I should just went and bought the new John Deere strip till rig, which they do have a new one out. It'll be out in 2023. But uh, that is not new to the market at all. It's actually a soil warrior, which is made by uh, environmental tillage systems it's ets yeah i think it's a good rig but i imagine that things i don't know i don't have a quote on them. i imagine it's a couple hundred thousand dollars and uh unver first did make a, a raptor i believe something like that it was a front folding dual placer but it would not run in hydrus and there's just uh some drawbacks to about every single thing that's on the market uh dual placer is great but again um so this is what we felt was the best way to go uh, and we could very easily add the uh, Montag generation 2 system to this go to 16 and be on row and uh, run dual place uh, dry and everything with it and that might be something we're, we'll work on or work towards uh, with this toolbar but uh, anyway hope that explains um, again a good machine poor follow-through and uh, detail orientation and uh, it's just kind of indicative to what you are seeing uh, right now I think everybody's massively labor short like that plates rough as can be the paint will probably peel it's they, they didn't even didn't even sandblast it off and like here look at this I mean this plates already bent if you can see that it's already bent way down because they didn't weld the bottom as well as the top that's the uh, craftsmanship there that I'm complaining about.